What would be dope is NBA cancelling every game on Kobe Bryant's funeral day so we all can attend. Major movement. You are locked on fantasy basketball. Your daily fantasy basketball podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast brought to you by Basketball Monster. My name is Josh Lloyd and I am the lead fantasy analyst at BasketballMonster.com and at Yahoo Sports Australia. And you can find me on Twitter as always at RedRock underscore B-Ball and on Instagram at Locked On Fantasy Basketball. Today we are recapping Monday's games. Michael Bolton. Let's get to it. To it. Let's get to it indeed. A little bit of a different show than usual. Only recapping Monday's games. No preview of Tuesday's action. That's because it is my birthday. Actually, tomorrow it's my birthday. But today for my birthday, my son and myself, we spent the day together. We went out. Uh, we rode on water slides. So that was awesome. And uh, you've seen I've had plenty of birthday celebrations already. Went out for a couple of dinners on the weekend, but got a family dinner tonight. So went out water slides all day. Came home. Quick recap podcast here. And then back out for another dinner later on tonight. So that is why the show is truncated today. Tomorrow, we'll be back to normal for the usual format of the program. So let's talk about those games now from Monday's action. And the first one of those we look at is the Cavs getting a big win over the Detroit Pistons. They win the game 115 to 100. Kevin Love, 20 points with seven rebounds and six triples in only 24 minutes. Minutes were down in this one. So again, it's really hard to judge what the hell is happening with Larry Nance. 24 minutes overall, 10 and five, two blocks and a steal. Really, really good. And he got the 24 minutes that he needs. But it wasn't trending that way in the first half. 24 minutes only for Love, 26 minutes for Tristan Thompson, and that enabled those minutes to come up for Nance. Still a guy that we hold, but if it's a game where those guys aren't playing 25 minutes, where, where does he fit in? That's the real question mark, I guess. Colin Sexton had 23, 3, and 5. Pretty strong night for him, while uh, Darius Garland continues his struggle. Six points in only 25 minutes. Four assists, no other numbers. I still believe in him as a 12-team hold, but again, if you're really struggling and you need instant production, then move on, because his upside is not super, super high. It was great to see Kevin Porter back, nine points in 16 minutes. He had three steals and a block. I think he will be a 12-team league guy at some point this season. He's far from a must-add at this point, but he is a guy that I think is going to have some value. Well, Tristan Thompson had 17 and 11 in his 26 minutes on the court. For the Pistons... Uh, Andre Drummond, 15 and 8, 3 steals and 2 blocks. That's basically just what he does. Reggie Jackson, another strong scoring night. On, his usage is absolutely through the roof at the moment. 16 points in 25 minutes. Not much else. Now, he's never been a high assist guy. He's never been a high steals guy. He's never been a good shooting guy. He's never been this high of a usage player. More of a 22 to 24, but he's not doing 30% at the moment. So I think there is some room for drop-off. As a point streamer, no worries. Christian Wood, the concerns again there, eight points in 20 minutes. Not enough minutes to be a must-roster guy, but let's just hold until the deadline. While Sphere McKay, look, did what he does, hit three threes, and that is all you look for from him. The Shark, Bruce Brown, played 26 minutes. Baby shark, do, 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 do. Eight points with six assists and a block on three of three shooting. There was no Derek Rose in this one, so that, again, skews things a little bit. But the, the fact that Derek Rose missed this one due to a knee injury is somewhat of a concern given his history with his knees. Um, yeah, Brown can be a 12-team league guy, but a brown Canard jackson rose combination means there's not enough minutes for those guys to go around. And it would be really interesting to see how they distribute that playing time. Dumbaya, as minutes, he went back up. Eight points in 35 uh, minutes there for Siku. He had two blocks. He's probably still more of a 14-team league player at this point in time. Let's go to the next game. It is the Miami Heat. They beat the Orlando Magic comfortably, 113-92. For the Magic, it wasn't Mo Bamba getting the bulk of the minutes. It was Nikola Vucevic who played 33. 13 and 12 with a steal and a block, not his best night. While Bamba, two blocks, two triples, but only 13 minutes for Mo Bamba. As a block specialist, he's fine. As anything else, he's not. Fultz had been a little bit down lately, but 12, 4, and 7 with two steals gets it done. While Aaron Gordon completely middling once again. 13 and 7 in 34 minutes. He is not a must roster player, in my opinion. Ken Birch started, whereas Wundu played 15 minutes off the bench, and Terrence Ross did Terrence Ross things. And by that, I mean he shot 14 times and only scored 11 points, but he did deliver the three triples. And that's what you want him for to hit some threes, hopefully get some points, and be better than a 29% shooter. Carter Williams, he had a good game last time. Not so good here. 9, 1, and 
and won in those 21 minutes. He's just a name to watch, but he's rostered in only 99% of the advanced metric leagues. I think he should be rostered in more of those. Probably in 14 teamers is a guy that you take a look at. Definitely in 16 team formats, there is something to see there for Big Mickey. For the uh, Miami Heat, Bam Bam Adebayo, triple-double, 20, 10, and 10. Big night for him, while Jim Butler had 19, 3, and 7 with a steal and a block. Because he's my butler. Well, the Spur Dunk Robinson, 21 points, 64% shooting, and 6 triples. Absolutely solid enough to be a 12-team league guy. Absolutely not a must-roster 12-team league guy. We know what he does. He hits threes, and that's what happens. Kendrick Nunn still out with that uh, Achilles issue, as was Justice Winslow. So we got another star from Tyler Hero, who had 13-4 and four and a weird three blocks as well. More of just a, a deeper league op- option. While Kelly Linick is back in the rotation, don't know how long he's going to remain there. But 25 minutes for Linick, 8-3 and three with three blocks. Seems to be replacing uh, Nunn, and when they lose an offensive option, he came in when Hero got hurt, then Hero came back in, and then Nunn got hurt. Uh, how Olenek fits in, whether he stays in over James Johnson, that is still up in the air at this point. Well, Derek Jones Jr., I don't think he's ever going to be a consistent fantasy producer. Eight points in 22 minutes for Big Derek in this one. I do have to tell you about a new podcast. Just imagine for the moment that it's the year 2010. You leave your high-paying job at a blue-chip software company, come home and do the same thing you've done now for weeks. You go to the medicine cabinet, you grab five painkillers from your cancer-stricken wife's never-ending supply, crush them up into a fine powder and wash it down with a tumbler of vodka. It didn't used to be this way and it's about to get much worse. Much, much worse. This is the story of Robert B and he tells it on the powerful new podcast, Keep Coming Back, Real Stories of Sobriety and Recovery. Each week, host Mike S interviews and unravels stories of people who fell down and have managed to get back up again. The broker who blacked out and woke up in another state not knowing how he got there. The college senior who tried controlling his drinking only to wake up in a jail cell. Everyone loves a comeback story, so subscribe and listen to Keep Coming Back, Real Stories of Sobriety and Recovery. A link to the podcast can be found on the Locked On Offers page. Let us move on now to the next game of the day from uh, from Monday. It was the Dallas Mavericks and the Oklahoma City Thunder. Very, very interesting game here. The Mavericks win at 107-97. How's DeLon Wright? 14 and 12 and four assists with 27 minutes. And this is a guy that I've talked about the last two games. and said, if these minutes keep high, he's a guy we add. Three in a row, add him. It looks, look, if he can keep these minutes up, we add him. Now, this was a weird one because Willie Cauley-Stein was available to play and he did not. Now, I don't think that that will be the case every game, but I've made plenty of arguments that he's not that good, and I think Maxi Kleber's better. I don't think they just won't play him at all, but going small, getting those minutes to D-line, getting those minutes to Seth Curry, getting those minutes to Kleber, maybe it works better in Dallas's favor. It's something to watch. I wouldn't drop Willie if I added him, even though his upside's pretty low. d I would go and grab for sure. Doncic had 29 and 11, but shit the bed with his free throws, while Paul Zingas had 14 and 10. In his 26 minutes, as for Kleber, the minutes are still frustrating, but 11 points, three triples, one steal, one block is hold worthy. It's not must roster worthy by any stretch. I'd probably have right over Kleber at this point, but he still can have some value. Well, Timmy Hardaway, again, uh, he's more almost like a Tyler Hero type of a, a three-point point streamer at this stage, I would say. 15 points in 35 minutes for Tim with his three threes, and Seth Curry had eight points in 30 minutes with two triples there as well. For the Thunder, Schroeder was pretty good here. 21, 7, and 6 in 41 minutes. Uh, his, con- his great season continues well. The Italian cock, Danilo Gallinari. Hands off my cock! 14, 5, and 6. And Gildas Alexander had 16, 11, and 4. Poor night from Stephen Adams. Only 24 minutes there. Uh, while Nerlens Noel only played the 19, 9, and 8. And we also got five nonsense minutes of Mike Muscala. Um, obviously a little bit of a slump here from Stephen Adams. I don't think it's too much that we need to concern ourselves with. And then, of course, the the Lugens Dorts and your Hamadou Diallos and your Deontay Burtons, they contributed a whole pile of nothing. This was a game that Chris Paul was out for, for personal, uh, personal issues. So that is uh, obviously something that has an impact on the Thunder and probably influenced the result. And some of the, uh, some of the other production numbers from some of those other... Um, other players like uh, like Schroeder and uh, and Gildas Alexander who are putting up some pretty strong uh, strong numbers. Of course, Paul didn't play this game here. Yeah, the personal reasons because uh, of the Kobe uh, Kobe Bryant situation. I think you'll get a lot of other players in the coming days not necessarily playing or um, yeah or taking days off, especially with that quote at the start from from George Hill that was yeah, about when the funeral comes up as well. There's going to be some interesting stuff, and we already have. The Clippers-Lakers game from tomorrow being postponed, and we don't know the date that that is going to be back on at this stage. 
The next game is the Sacramento Kings and the Minnesota Timberwolves, an overtime game. Nemanja Bialica, what a game. 20-9, and nine, eight assists, two steals, three blocks, 70% shooting. No Holmes, no Bagley. Bialica's a must roster player. While Bud Heald off the bench, unbelievable. 42 points in 38 minutes with nine threes. Really got hot. Usage through the roof. Minutes through the roof. This is more than he was doing in a starting role. He's been great in those two bench games. Let's see what happens. Of course, he's still a hold. While Fox had 22, 7, and 8, and the pencil Harrison Barnes. Barnesy. He did nothing. 11 points for Bogdan Bogdanovic in 34 minutes with six rebounds. He started. The production is not great. The fact that those minutes are pushing from 27 to 33, 34 is really encouraging, and he should be a 12-team league guy. While uh, the Undertaker, Dwayne Devon, played 16 minutes. Harry Giles played seven minutes. We didn't really see you know, much in the, the way of those big men with Bielitsa getting some of those minutes. Also, a pretty strong game from Kent Bazemore, but nothing that I would be looking to overreact to. For the Wolves, Andy Wiggins had 36 and 9 in 43 minutes. He hit seven threes. He had eight assists. A fantastic performance. Obviously horrible from the free throw line, three of six. But that is really, really strong to get that sort of a game out of Wiggins. And this is the first big game we've had from Robert Covington really since Towns' return. 24 and 7. Now, he didn't have any defensive numbers, but he still hit six threes. So it's good sign to see that no, those numbers come back. Well, uh, Towns, he had 23 and 8 with a steal in a block. And so many people ask me, it's Josh, because the Timberwolves are so bad, is Towns going to sit out games? I would be stunned. And again, I just... People overreact to that news or people worrying about this so often. Maybe it happens in the last week of April, which again, I cannot stress this enough. You should never, ever be playing fantasy in that last week of April. But the Timberwolves have sucked for all of Towns' career bar one season. And he didn't sit any games. Literally, that's why people drafted him. He never gets hurt, mate. He's an Iron Man. Never going to go down. And now he gets hurt and everyone's shitting their pants that he's going to sit out another 50 games. Maybe he misses a game, and maybe I'm wrong. But that idea is consistently overblown. He's got a track record of never doing it. So why do we all of a sudden think the Timberwolves are bad? They've been bad forever. They made the playoffs one year, and then they've been bad every other year of Kansas' career. This is his fifth season. I, I don't think that's going to be a worry. Strong from Shabazz Napier, 10 points, 6 rebounds, 8 assists, and 2 steals. That's enough for a 12-team sort of flyer there. Well, Jordy McLaughlin, I think in 16 teams, you're going to have a look at him. He's playing 20-plus minutes a night. He's sharing the court with Napier yeah, at times. Well, uh, Jarrett Culver, yeah, terrible. Five points in 26 minutes. He was playing well, played poorly when Towns returned, got benched, came back in the starting lineup, and he's been trash. Again, if in a 10, move on. If you want to move on in a 12, I think you consider it. I probably would hold, again, at least through the trade deadline, but it's been really, really rough from him for nearly all of the season, bar a strong two-week stretch. Uh, Akogi played 26 minutes but didn't do too much there and his little uh, renaissance looks to have been ended prematurely. Let us move on now to the next game, the San Antonio Spurs and the Chicago Bulls. The Bulls win 110-109. <sighs> Minimum Derek White had zero points in 22 minutes. He's good. We know he's good. He was bad here. And of course, after five straight games of 28 minutes, he plays 22. DeJounte only plays 22 because Paddy Mills played 29 and hit uh, 25 points with six triples. If you added White, you hold past this game. It looks almost a lot more like it's just, hey, Paddy Mills got hot. Let's play him some more. But this frustration is going to exist with these guys all season. As for DeJounte, in a 10-teamer, in an 8-teamer, he's a drop. In a 10, I reckon he's pretty close. I'd still hold him in a 12-team format, though. Trey Lyles went from 6 minutes to 26 minutes in back-to-back -back games. He had 10 and 8. Not that he's doing absolutely anything at all in any game that he plays, but the minutes went back up. While Pirtle had an absolute monster with Aldridge sitting this one out. We know that Pirtle can be a good player. 16 and 13 with 3 blocks. In a dynasty league, he's a really strong buy because Aldridge isn't going to be around forever. He's already 34 years of age, and Pirtle is going to slide in. He's going to start, and he's going to be a consistent double-double 70% guy with block that is a top 100 lock. DeRozan had a big 36 and 10 night as well. Not much in the peripherals outside of rebounds, but still, that's a really good night from De uh, DeMar DeRozan. For the Bulls, Chris Dunn, really good again. Eight assists, three steals and a block. Should be a 12-team league guy. While Luke Cornett, out of nowhere, off the top rope. 31 minutes, 12 and 9, two triples, a steal and a block. Look at his recent games and his minutes. They've been really, really low, but they decided to bump them really up high in this one, so that's hard to trust. Well, Thad Young can't get anything exciting happening. He's more of a 14-team league guy than anything. 13 and 9 for him in those 29 minutes. While Zach Levine, 23 and 6, and Sadoransky, 13, 3 and 6 is pretty solid there. Um, 
The Hammer Denzel Valentine had 16 and 4 with four triples in 19 minutes. Whether they continue to play him over someone like Ryan Archer Jackiner, which they 125 million percent should, remains to be seen. But he was quite good in this one. I'd like to see what he could do if he gets this sort of a role again, as he should. And then we'll see how the Bulls were worked out. But that would still just only be a deeper league one. But in a 20, in an 18 team league scenario, I'd take a look at the Hammer and see if he can provide anything for your squad in that scenario. Now we move on to the last game of the night, the Houston Rockets and the Utah Jazz. The Rockets get the win undermanned on the road. A huge win for them, 126-117. No Clint Capella, no Russell Westbrook, and no James Harden. They started P.J. Tucker at center. He played 32 minutes and had 9 and 10 with 5 assists, but it was Eric Gordon who went bananas. And we talked about this on yesterday's show, that he's going to put up big numbers when those guys are out. 50 points, 6 triples, 6 rebounds, 2 steals, and 1 block. And look at his recent production with Guy Sideline, how well he does. Sell him as high as you can now. If you've got him, absolutely sell him. He cannot keep this up when these guys play, I guarantee you. Same with Dan House, who had 21 and 11 in 46 minutes with five steals. That's great. Austin Rivers had 21 points in 41 minutes. Ben McLemore, he can't get nothing happening. I don't know why I said it with such poor English. He can't do anything at the moment. Six points in 24 minutes for McLemore. No Capella and only six minutes for Isaiah Hartenstein is very disappointing. Only seven minutes for Chris Clemens with no James Harden or Russell Westbrook. Really confusing rotations there, but the Rockets won. So it is really hard to criticize the overall uh, the overall outcome. For the Jazz, the Don Donovan Mitchell. He's gone. He's good. 36 points with four assists and three steals. And Bog- Boyan Bogdanovich had 30 points with seven triples. Good games from both of those guys. Well, Gobert finally slowed down a bit. 12 and 14 with two blocks and 60% shooting. It's not a complete slowdown, but it's nowhere near as good as he had been. Well, Jingle and Joe, 7, 2, and 6, and another poor Mike Conley game. But 10, 3, and 4, that's not great, of course, but 25 minutes, that's the encouraging sign there for Conley. Um, if he pushes back to 30 minutes, he will be a must-roster guy. I still I think we still hold on to him. Whether he starts or not is still a big, uh, big question mark for the rest of this season. They are pushing him really slowly, and maybe it's not until the All-Star break. I still would hold in majority of cases, but it hasn't been good. That is the most encouraging sign, though, to see 25 minutes coming out of Mike Conley as we did in this game. Guys, as I said, this is only a short podcast, so I'm going to wrap it up there. Make sure you are subscribed. Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, YouTube. Leave a comment down below. Give it a thumbs up. Leave a five-star rating and a review, guys. We are done here. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. See ya. George Hill.